Hi and a very warm welcome today. I'm Christine Field, Mama of Many, and I just pray that the Holy Spirit will meet with you in such a special way today. As we lean into everything that heaven has to say, I believe the Lord is imparting something so supernatural, so special into his church right now. He is getting us prepared, armed and ready for all that lies ahead. We are dangerous to the enemy's camp and we are going to be a blessing everywhere we go. Get ready for the supernatural power of God to take hold. Firstly and foremost, to take hold of your life as you surrender all to Jesus. The Lord is going to meet you right where you are at right now. And through this broadcast, I'm believing that the Lord is going to touch, change, rearrange areas in your life that need to be touched, changed and rearranged, just as the finger of God has done so beautifully, lovingly and powerfully with me and continues to do in me every day. Last time we kick-started this mini-series, Prophetic Word, Teaching, Learning Together on letting go to take hold and it was recalibrate. So first and foremost, I sense the Lord in his church right now is recalibrating his church, his children, his people. He is just making those changes, those tweaks. He is changing us, rearranging us. And that's the first step. Every day we need to come to the Lord and allow him to do in our lives what only the Lord can do in our lives. We have to lay down our opinions, our thoughts, our ways of doing things, our understandings, our misunderstandings. In all our ways, we need to be trusting in the Lord with all of our hearts and not leaning on our own broken understanding but looking to him and then knowing the Lord is lining up he's bringing our lives into right alignment he's directing our paths and our paths come into that direct alignment with kingdom living God's path that we walk in the spirit we live in the spirit we see the supernatural release of the Holy Spirit through our lives to others lives and I want to continue this time. I sense the Lord saying today, let go to take hold convergence. I want to unpack for you what the Lord has been pouring into me. Um, quite a big word, but by the end of this session today, I believe you're going to see this word as a key every day to you unlocking your destiny your dynasty and all that the Lord has called you to be. Jesus himself said that you shall receive power. You shall be clothed with power, a verse that I love when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power in the Bible, it's the, that word dunamis, and that means ability, efficiency, and might. There are other uh, words for power in the Bible. Uh, it can often, uh, Jesus and uh, the Father can be passing on to us his delegated authority. That's what Jesus has given to us. All power has been given to us. All delegated authority from the very throne of God is ours as we are his kingdom kids, his princes and princesses on the earth, as we are recalibrated to know who and whose we are in direct alignment with the throne, as we know that we are his ambassadors everywhere we go. We, we represent the king and his kingdom and there is no lack in his kingdom. There is no good thing that he will withhold from those who uphold his name. There's a word for you right now. So everywhere we go, let's be upholders of the name of Jesus Christ because we bear the bloodline of Jesus Christ. And if you can hear all of that lovely bumping and bang, banging going on above me um, in the office here. Early evening, my kids are home and kids are doing what they do, obviously roaming and playing and banging and bumping and whatever upstairs above me. But hey, we do Mama of Many, very real. And so welcome to my world today. And I wouldn't have it any other way. But I am obediently releasing these words as the Lord showed me to do at the beginning of this year, every week consistently. And I thought at the time, Lord, how will I do that? How will I bring your word, your message every week? Um, in between business and family and five kids and everything else that's rocking and rolling. But when our lives are built upon the rock, that is Christ Jesus. We just line up our yes and then expect heaven's best and we roll with 
the power of the Holy Spirit. So I was speaking there about power. You shall receive uh, power, be clothed with power. We have been clothed with the Holy Spirit and that power, that dunamis, it means ability, efficiency and might. Thank God we have his delegated authority over our lives and we also have his divine ability in all situations. There's a word, somebody needs to receive this right now. You have been given divine ability, enablement, empowerment for the task that is before you. Fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord, and I will not fail you and I will not let you fall, but you will rise with me above it all. So go strong, beautiful one. Um, that's maybe for one or, or for many today, but receive that word from the very heart of your father, pouring courage into your heart and into your life to get up and to go again. Um, and so, yeah, but we, we have his dunamis, his ability, his efficiency. There is no waste in God. Nothing will be wasted. Oh, how I would pray this prayer every time my 16, our 16 year old son has just completed his GCSEs and he's now out for summer. It's probably him you can hear banging, <laughs> making all that noise above us. Um, and he, I would pray that over him, that he would be efficient in those exams. There wouldn't be any wasted time. Everything would be used. The capacity would be um, would be realised in, in everything. And we can trust, not in our own ability, not in our own capacities, but in the capacity, the limitless ability and capacity of the Holy Spirit who has clothed us and who has not just clothed us, but is within us, working through us. And the Lord then promises us, as part of that dunamis, we have his might. That's his miracle working power. In the unseen, behind the scenes, God's miracles are at work on our behalf. So let go. The Lord has been showing me on my crazy Cali calling, as I've been calling it. And I've been back now from California for just over a week. And I'm just seeing the Lord continue to unpack and outwork so much of what he's poured in as I uh, rise to live in this now every day. And... Uh, what I did notice as well with that recalibrating, you know, sometimes just shifting our thinking, our ways of doing things, coming to that right realignment, allowing the finger of God to just tweak and change what needs to be changed. When my world looked like it got completely rocked and rolled with uh, a what should have been a nine hour flight to California, as I shared last time, turning into 48 hours and cancelled flights and all sorts of things going on. Um, as I shifted my thinking. I remember sitting on the second plane. Now, I'm not a natural lover of flying. Anybody who knows me really well, but the Lord has really delivered me completely from the fear of flying. <laughs> I was sat on the second plane and whenever the Tannoy message came through, uh, just about to take off, literally they're doing the final checks, the pilot apologising that the engineer crew was coming on board. The, the test had thrown up some errors um, and at that point, I'm thinking, oh God, do I carry on? And I'm I'm praying. And as you know, the story, I contacted my husband and he said, oh, you know, whatever, Christine, I really believe that the enemy is trying to stop you from getting uh, to where you need to be. When you're on target, when you're in the call of God, don't be surprised when hindrances come your way. Don't be surprised, but go with your peace, as I've said before. And as I just released all into the Lord's hands, I then watched the Lord, I, I didn't understand, as I said to you before, I didn't understand why the plans were changing, why I was 48 hours behind schedule arriving at the hotel. I'd lost um, the money uh, on the first night of the hotel. Actually, I still need to claim that back. Good point. Um, but all will be recovered and so much more. And as I, you know, I'd missed out on that and I was being, uh, you know, then off to a, a Holiday Inn Express for the night, I trusted those plans to the Lord, those rearrangements. And the Lord spoke to me on that flight whenever it was, it looked like maybe the second flight was going to be cancelled again. I began to think, Lord, is it me? It's like everywhere I go, trouble just seems to be following with this trip right now, Lord. And I had to take a fresh grip and take a hold. I had to recalibrate my thinking. And that's where the Lord spoke to me, that beautiful word from Job, Job 1, where God says, have you considered my servant, my child Job. Have you considered Steve? Have you considered Sarah? Whatever your name is, you put your name in that. Now, I really believe prophetically to repeat this for your heart right now today. Have you considered there's no one like 
Job on the earth. There's no one like you on the earth in your father's love and heart and DNA for your life, his plans. I know the plans I have for you, you specifically, child of God. Plans to bless you and prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope, hope in all things and a future. Do you know, I asked my husband just at dinner tonight, I said, honey, do you ever get down? Do things ever get on top of you that you get, you know, you get get sad or you get depressed? Because he, he seems to wake up happy and he's always the, the rock and the strength um, uh, in, our, in our world. And he looked at me and he said, oh, of course, things can get to me. But he said, I am never without hope. <laughs> what a secret. What a key to success right there. Because we know biblical hope isn't like the world's wishy-washy. It's a confident expectation of God in all things and of good in all things. But anyway, I was telling you my miracle story as that all of the changed plans kicked in. What I then realised was, and it, it took uh, about five days into my trip in California, where I was then invited to, uh, to attend a masterclass. I should have been flying back on the day of that masterclass, but instead... All of my flights were extended 48 hours the other end, no costs applied. My hotel was extended free of charge and complimentary the other end so that I could take in what the Lord, the Lord didn't meet, need me in California. He was quite happy for me to be preparing my heart in the Holiday Inn Express, missing my flight, learning those lessons and those weapons of faith um, in those moments because the Lord miraculously had a work, had dinners for me to be out with a ministry team and, and with people um, for using and maximising that stay to the limit. God's resources for your life, God's purposes for your life are limitless. So whenever it looks like the limits are being put on, whenever, whenever fear tries to come upon you, keep looking up to the limitless one and trust him no matter what. I don't know why I felt led to share that with you, um, but hey, we are just going with what the Holy Spirit is saying today and I'm sure that's more than okay with you. So let's dive in. Let go to take hold. We need to let go of all that's not of the Lord as the Lord spoke that word to my spirit in the airport, literally as I was about to fly back from San Diego and said, let go to take hold. And please listen to the message last time on recalibrate and, and all the weight that comes with that. Um, and this time, let go to take hold convergence. Um, it says in Hebrews 12, verse 12 to 15. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. That's what the Lord is doing right now as we let go, as we let go of all of the trauma of the past, the pain of the past and retain the lessons and the goodness that the Lord wants to pour into your life, to pour out through your life for others in the future. As we let go of all that is not of him, we will rise up in him and through him and we will win, we will overcome. God has called us more than conquerors. We have to recalibrate, we have to realign, we have to not conform our thinking and our ways to the ways and patterns and negativity of this world and media, but we need to be transformed in the renewing of our minds. So how beautiful is that? Let go to take hold convergence let go and take a new grip do you know whenever you're slipping you feel like you're slipping sometimes you've just got to take a fresh grip you've got to grasp on again with both hands and hold on to Jesus tightly hold him closely and keep him intimately with you everywhere you go hold on to his word dive deeper into his word deeper than you've ever gone before because the Lord has treasures to for you to draw from the deep at this time. So with your tired hands, I feel the Lord just strengthening today. As I stretch up my hands towards you, I'm praying right now, Lord, divinely strengthen tired and weak hands today to take a fresh grip of you, Jesus. Lord, may they hold on to you the way for their lives, the truth that, Lord, you will dispel every lie, every negative thought that has come and targeted them to take them out. But Lord Jesus, I thank you. You are about pouring in 
the life, Jesus. You're the way, truth, and the life. We receive your abundant resurrection life into those dead, tired, dormant areas. And I speak strength to your weak knees, that you're going to get up and you're going to run again, recalibrate it, and you're going to understand, whoa, the secret truth of convergence as well, and the Lord setting a straight path for your feet to, to run with strength, and you will not fall, you will not be taken out um, in Jesus' mighty name. So, convergence, let's just for a, a moment, let's look at what it means dictionary-wise. What does the English dictionary have to say about convergence? And I've put down here, it's the fa Cambridge Dictionary. The fact that two or more things, ideas, etc. become similar or come together. Another meaning I saw was a location where air flows or ocean currents meet. How beautiful is that? When oh, the Holy Spirit breathed life into Adam and Eve, he became and we became a living spirit. When God breathed life into you, that convergence, that oneness, God's life is within you. And when God breathed into us, we became a living spirit. I believe that that convergence right now, those where air flows or ocean currents meet, I believe all the ocean currents of his love is meeting with your life and with your heart today. I believe that the air flow, uh, Ruach HaKodesh means breath of God, the very breath of God, the air flow of God is flowing into your mortal being and raising you up eternal and immortal. Don't wait till you get to heaven to be living the eternal life, but you are child of God, you're living his eternal life right now. I tell my mama every time I, I visit her every day, apart from when I was in uh, on my crazy Cali calling, um, and I was telling her again uh, early earlier today, mama, you know, she, you trust him, you praise him no matter what. He is God, we are not. And I remind my mama of who and whose she is. And sometimes we need to know that too. We need that reminding. And I believe there are children of God right now hearing the sound of my voice, receiving that word right now. So the Holy Spirit is breathing fresh life into your being right now. Convergence, it means it's probably the most important word missing from your vocabulary to date. Simply put, Convergence describes a point in life when it all starts coming together. And I'm going to unpack that for you in just these few moments. We don't need to take long, but it's a life transforming truth that when we do grasp this, it's going to have such applicable meaning to your everyday life that you will understand there is no circumstance. There is no pain you have been through. There is no job that was wasted. There is no, nothing in God that will be wasted, but that convergence, God will use it all. And there comes a point in time when it will all come together. Right place, right people, and your right purpose before God. So it's that convergence. It's that place where everything comes together. In my life, what the Lord has shown me, and I'm going to, this will, I hope, help help you somewhat to grasp and to understand um, where I'm going with this. Um, it's a concept that I'm bringing uh, to your life today. So the convergence process, the state of converging for me, I put down here in my journal, God, the Hebrew mindset, as I learned so much about when I was called to Israel and lived and worked there for a couple of years, the Hebrew mindset and all of the feasts, etc., the Jewish feasts that um, that God commanded his uh, Israel to obey and to follow. They are all cyclical. Western mindset, however, is linear. We go A to B. We think A to Z. Is that American? <laughs> A to Z. Very British. Um, and we think with finality, backwards, we're either going backwards on something or we're going forwards 
Not so with God, not so with the Hebrew mindset. Yes, so with our Western mindset, but we need to recalibrate and we need to understand convergence today so that we can go forward, we can go in God's onwards and upwards cycles for our lives because God will keep bringing things round. We don't need to circle those negative mountains over and over again in our lives, but we need to see those mountains brought down to the ground, not by our might or power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And we need to be cycling forever growing in God's love, forever growing in his word, forever growing in family and doing family better, doing marriage better, cycling and circling, forever growing in our in our business spheres, onwards and upwards. Um, so I put down here on my journal, not so uh, with our lives and God, cycles. God is always taking us higher, further. All our past experiences and cycles are propelling us onwards and upwards, making us stronger. We are growing in knowing him. That's his desire for us continually. They that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits, shall do great things for him. We are growing in knowing him. We're going further. We are gaining continually. We are convergence Get this, I didn't realise this until I was away in America. Convergence is something that happens in, in every one of us and it happens um, around about the age of 50. <laughs> How amazing is that? That's the time whenever there is a convergence. There is so much experience. There is so much understanding that has been gained. There is so much life that has been lived that what, the, what we can then do is either we come to that place of convergence and we just plateau. Or we use everything we've ever been through in life to make the uh, greater is the, the latter house than the former house, the word of God says. Greater is your are your latter days going to be than your former days because there can be a convergence of in every day, every situation you face. You can maybe be drawing from a pool, <laughs> from those rivers of living waters, from something in the past as you've allowed God's healing to come to areas of your life, um, not the trauma to come out. When you're no longer um, being triggered by things, but you're allowing the Lord to use, there's a convergence, there is a coming together for such a time as this, that nothing will be wasted, nothing will be missing, nothing will be lost from your from your life but the lord will heal he will make whole and he will use it all so that your greater will your latter days be than your former that you are going to live a life on target you are going to be strong you are going to be uh, to know to look to him like on the plane i had learned to let go of my own plans and ways so that I could take hold of God's new plans, which were well and truly above my plans that I wouldn't see coming into fruition until five days into the trip. And why there had to be that whole balligan of uh, situations and uh, circumstances, what, what seemed like disarray and dismay. My God was in it and he was working all things for the best and the ultimate. And that's what the Lord is doing in your life. So trust him, trust that there will always be a convergence and a coming together. Um, convergence, I've put down here, um, that it can cause you to live your most impacting years until eternity. If applied, all of the lessons of life, all of your highs, all of your lows. Um, for me, uh, my convergence would be, I put down here, converging for me is my amazing husband. It's my five gorgeous children. So I'm living, I'm cycling, circling, cycling in life, continually going higher and further in the purposes of God um, with that core in my life, my family, Israel, my calling to Israel. That isn't something that I don't go back to Israel. I'm continually learning, gaining more knowledge and love for Israel and God's people there. Um, church, career, uh, ministry to the nations, all of the highs and lows that have made me who I am today. I am learning, and this is what God wants us to learn as we come into that convergence zone, where we are letting go of constraints, that we no longer allow things to restrain us, to contain us, but we let go, we allow the Holy Spirit to show us those constraints in our lives, and we allow his healing to come and make us whole again. Um, I put down here, it's business, it's motherhood, it's lessons learned. 
Now, the Lord wants to use that convergence of all of that in our lives and to draw from that bank um, every day. And we, when we live that life of convergence through the power of the Holy Spirit, a healed life, a whole life. For me, convergence, as I was away in California, there was a coming together and an understanding and a oneness with um, the the apostolic and the prophetic. And I, I, I grew to understand and, a, a, and a, a, an increased knowledge around that. Um, there is the convergence of destiny and dynasty. Do you know, destiny is everything we're called to. Our dynasty, God works through kings and rulers and leaders and family lines. God is calling you, ch children of God, listening right now to raise up dynasties for him. Yes, the enemy is coming for our generations like never before. He is coming for this end time generation, but he is not having them. We need to strengthen, as I said, shared that word prophetically at the beginning. We need to strengthen those tired hands and those weak knees. We need to strengthen our young. We need to pour in God's word. We need to not stand for what is sin and what is destructive behaviours for, for their precious lives. We need to raise up dynasties that are kings and priests, rulers and leaders on the earth for him, taking dominion because the Lord has told us to occupy, to gain ground, to rule and reign until he comes. We are called to be the restraining force through the power of the Holy Spirit on the earth until Christ returns. We are called to be that voice of truth. And when it, we're living that converged life, we no longer worry about what people think anymore. We know we we know God is for us. Therefore, who can be against us? That's the converged life that can come up with the response, that can come up with the God word and the God response and things that's had enough experience and faith within it. And, you know, you if you've just met with Jesus recently, you're on a good path with hearing this right now because you can start using everything and laying it all at the feet of Jesus so that God can raise it up whole in him. One of the things that the Lord really did for me, I believe that God wants us hurting people hurt people. He wants us healed and whole. Do you know, I put down... Um, about eight eight things, key things that the Lord did in my life when I was in California, and I'm so thankful that I obeyed his call there. One was, uh, it was recalibrating, shared that last time. Two, convergence, and I'm unpacking some of that for you here and now. Three, I, I came into that apostolic and prophetic alignment. I understood that I've always known the power of covering and it means the world to me. My husband is my spiritual covering as a woman um, and I value that so much. My church is my spiritual covering um, and I've also uh, now have a, a, an apostolic and a prophetic covering so that whenever I, I'm bringing things w into my church, then I, I'm flowing out of something, a, a covering that is way bigger than me as well. So I found that through, you know, the Lance Walno ministries. I never understood about multiple coverings before. Now I do. It makes sense. I don't know why I shared that with you, but I'm just giving you it um, real and, and raw. Some of you maybe need that um, right now. Fourthly, dist destiny and dynasty that convergence of that. Five, the ecclesia, his church, and I'm going to be unpacking that. There's a power punch coming next time. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Um, sixth, healing. I found God did such a healing work in my life. I put down here seven impartation. Healing, I didn't even realise it, but there was, it was actually on the very last night. And of course, I should have been home by then. But instead, I was having dinner with Lance Walno and, and some of the team there. And as he, he pulled in a group huddle um, at the end of that night, and he, I was pulled in beside him and I got my arms around Lance. He's got his arm around me and we're all in this team, staff, his wife's there, group hug, huddle, and he's praying. And then he lifted his arm from around me. And he put his hand on my head and I didn't realise at the time, but I experienced, well, I did experience, it was like an impartation of all that was within him, all God had poured into him, all of the incredible, uh, the, the pollinating that he's received through so many different ministries that he's connected with. I just felt like the Lord pouring that into me. But as he put his hand on my head, when I went back to my room later, I realised 
It was like something had completely lifted off me. I was completely healed and whole of areas that I didn't realise were still a strong hold on me that were hurting me. Um, for instance, you know, prophetically, where, where I've had to take a, maybe a different stand to my peers and to those that I love and close family members around me um, in my church family um, and eldership and maybe had to be a different voice when it came to BLM or a different voice uh, with COVID and a different voice um, with vaccines and, and different things prophetically because I will only ever speak as I believe the Lord would have me to speak. I don't speak to be popular. I speak to obey his voice because his voice is the dearest and nearest thing in my life and I treasure his voice so much um, but I realized that there had been from some of that crossfire that I had hurt and I had to the Lord just came with his healing because I came within an environment where I realized wow here the prophetic is just commonplace I, I felt very alone sometimes but you are never alone just like was said of Elijah there is five thousand who have not bowed their knee to Baal and You've got to always know that you, Jesus plus me, equals the majority. And the reason that God has called me here to Norwich and to be planted and flourishing in the house that I'm planted and flourishing in and I love and I adore is because God needs the voice, his voice. He needs my voice. He needs your voice wherever he's placed you. May we be faithful and true to his voice. That's a converged life. That is a healed life and it's a whole life. So I hope that you're getting this conceptually today, all that the Lord wants to do and wants to say in you. And I realised that I received such an impartation. There was a divine impartation and, you know, as much as some friends uh, and people and I even thought myself, maybe I could do that online. I could never have received such an impartation um, as I received by obeying him. God's will, his bill. So my crazy Cali calling, I will forever be thankful that the Lord made me willing to obey. Um, and I, I would, I'm in awe and I'm in fear of where I would be had I have missed out and missed it. Um, but I thank God that he's such a cyclical God. I'm sure in some way he would, he just keeps giving chance upon chance, but there comes that day when, hey, you know, chance, chance, time's up <laughs> and we want to keep obeying everything that heaven has and everything heaven is saying for our lives. So, yeah, in wrapping this up right now, um, convergence, I believe that's what God is doing so that we can live these lives that are on target, that are strong and powerful, that are impacting. Our most impacting days are ahead of us because the Lord wants to use everything that's gone before. The Lord is restoring right now the years that the locusts have eaten. What you thought had been devoured and destroyed from your life, God is bringing to resurrection life for you right now in Jesus' name. So number one today, that converged life, is one, it's Holy Spirit, power-packed living. You receive his power today, his dunamis, his ability, efficiency and might for your life, his delegated authority, that God's word in your mouth is just as powerful as God's word in his mouth. He has delegated all authority to you and it has been given to you. Let's exercise that. Let's build our faith muscles today in every way. Secondly, a converged life knows to go from the pit to the palace, the dungeon to the dream, just like Joseph. All that he suffered, all that he went through in his life, 13 years uh, away from his father, kidnapped, child trafficked, if you like. Um, he was sold to the slave trade, he was abused, he was humiliated, he was mocked, he was beaten, he went through hell on earth. But God used everything he went through because he put his trust in the Lord. And no matter where he found himself, something that we were encouraged to do on a masterclass that I attended in America was to map out our highs and our lows. And I went through my life and I mapped out the key highs you know, met Jesus at the age of 11. Um, what was the low before that? My parents had split up. I met Jesus at the age of 11. My parents, my life's radically transformed. My mum and dad meet Jesus. Their marriage is restored. All of our families serving the Lord. What the enemy meant for evil, 
God turned around, turned for good. So you can see if you map, you do that exercise, map your highs and lows in your life and you'll see where God's convergence, God's Holy Spirit comes. The breath of God comes and breathes life and goodness, goodness on it. And you can also then trace patterns to make sure that you are not allowing any generational traffic, as I now call it, um, to be robbing you um, and to be stealing you from you and destroying um, from you. We don't want that dirty devil to have any loophole into our lives but we want to shut tight with the blood of Jesus and seal the door of our hearts and our lives and our families and keep that snake out the one thing Adam and Eve was commissioned to do was to keep the snake out of the garden and so let's keep that snake out of our garden and whenever he comes in let's cut off that snake's head his authority his wrong thinking his mindsets and cut off if he had an arm cut off his arms and his that dirty devil's activity because the devil has no authority over our lives unless we give it to him the devil has no authority in our families unless we give it to him and i'm speaking to myself right now i sense the holy spirit afresh breathing his words of life into me because i am taking captivity captive everything that the enemy tries to captivate in my family he ain't having any of uh, he's not having me, my family, or any of our faith for tea in Jesus' name. My family belongs to Jesus, and so does yours. Let's rise up in all God has for us. So from the pit to the palace, the dungeon to the dream, Joseph, he knew that. He knew that whenever he was thrown into to prison, he was in the pit, and then he um, was elevated to the palace. He was thrown into a dungeon, but then he was elevated to God's ultimate dream and purpose and DNA for his life, which was prime minister of the land, second in command. Well, the Lord wants to say to you today, that's the delegated authority he's given to you as his child right now, that you are second in command only to him, to God Almighty, obey him. And he tells us to obey the authorities, the, the laws of the land, those leaders who are above us, absolutely, that's obeying God. We do it all to him. We look to him as long as it doesn't take us outside what is God's word and what is God's truth for our lives. And then we stand up and we are a voice of truth, just like Daniel's were in his day, just like Esther's were. If I perish, I perish. She will go to the king. We will go to the rulers of our, of our nations. We will go to the, the leaders of schools and school boards and we will speak truth in love and we will uphold the name of Jesus because no good thing will the Lord withhold from those who uphold him. There's that prophetic word coming around again full circle that he poured into my heart right at the beginning of this. Hey, you seeing the cy cyclical God there just reinforcing his message, his changes in our lives and we never go backwards um, or we, we are always just cyclically going onwards and upwards in him, gaining more of Jesus, gaining more uh, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, uh, prospering in his ways, more in faith. Uh, our best days are still ahead of us, beautiful friends. And thirdly, the convergence zone. And I've covered some of that in my own, being very accountable and um, transparent with you all, uh, the areas that the Lord has spoken to me on convergence. And I actually, from my, this was in my journal, I um, don't know if you can can see it, but in, a, in essence, this is my converged life, upside down, brilliant. <laughs> um, so I start, the very core of my life is here. This is how the Lord showed me at the airport on the way back, coming back. And there's then there's David and our marriage right there at the core. Out of a strong marriage, everything else can flow whole. Family, healthy children in that God cycle, the, the Ruach, the breath of God flowing and breathing life through it all, through to my church, through my to my calling for Israel that will just keep, um, I believe, my greatest impacting days for Israel and the church are still ahead as the Lord breathes his word and life and the Holy Spirit into my business sphere here. It's all a convergence. There's, there's not one without the other. There's not a line for business that's unholy and then a line for church. No, it's this converged life. Are you getting it, beautiful friends? And we go round to my highs and lows, the lessons that I've learned in my life that I can apply into all of these areas every day as I, as I need to. And always learning and growing and then living my expansive eternal life 
here and now or going higher and getting better. You're saying, Christine, is a reverse for this? Is this scriptural? Absolutely. Well, I gave you the scripture at the beginning and I'm giving you one now, which I only saw before I went live with this today. Um, and I had to quickly look up the scripture reference and it says, Proverbs 4 verse 8, 18, the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter until the perfect day. We are going onwards and upwards in him to the perfect light of life, Jesus Christ, our King. Isn't that beautiful? So the converged life is a powerful, impacting, useful in God's hand, an arrow that hits targets on time, every time. No waste of time in God. He will cause everything. He will take as you surrender to him today your life. As you surrender to him all your past experiences, I want to pray for you now. And we're going to let go to take hold of God's converged life, that we're going to live the most impacting life and see all is holy to him. All belongs to him. That word holy means set apart for God's purposes, to give him glory. That word holy means fully functional, before dysfunction and sin set in. We can live fully functional lives once more in him and through him. We have our well-being. So let's pray today. If you want to surrender all, if you want to live this life and ask for the Holy Spirit to give you fresh revelation and understanding, to build on this foundation today in your own life, that you are going to see the convergence of all that has gone before and all that is yet to be your future, just converging to make you to be all God has called you to be. Then get ready. The Holy Spirit is going to breathe life afresh into you right now in Jesus' name. Father, we come to you right now. Thank you, Lord. It's not necessarily an easy topic, but I believe it's an essential word for us to reframe in our world, Lord Jesus, that we're going to know that it's going to be that converged life is the point in life when it all comes together. Lord, may everything that you've poured into us, all of our life experiences, Lord, all of the pain and the sin, Lord, we thank you that the blood of Jesus washes away. Thank you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are our healer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are restoring what has been broken. And Lord, you're bringing wholeness so that, Jesus, we can live by the power of your Holy Spirit and your word. Breathe afresh into us. Today, your life have your way and let us live that converged life. Lord Jesus, that divine convergence, that coming together, that oneness with you and with your destiny and dynasty for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Until next time. Mwah.